This is the ML2 Standard, the affordable single cut offering from Chapman Guitars. I've been playing this guitar for a few weeks now and I've got a lot to say about it, especially about one thing, but let me give you the quick rundown first on why it's even here. After reviewing my ML3 Pro Modern recently, a message popped up in my DMs that put the shits up me if I'm honest. It was from Chapman Guitars and because the concept of that last video was a little bit spicy, I thought I might have rustled some jimmies somewhere down the line, but actually what happened next was awesome. Dan at Chapman had actually watched the video and was thanking me for it and for such an honest take on the guitar. For a random dude on the internet who just likes talking about guitars like me, that was huge. But the bigger fact is that Chapman are still out there in the community staying in touch with people and checking out their videos and that made me realise something. They are still a brand that's actually involved in the community and cares about guitar players. So with that in mind, when Dan offered to loan me a couple of guitars to try out and get my thoughts on, I absolutely had to accept. Full transparency as always though, this is not a sponsored video. When I'm done with this guitar and the M01 you can see behind me, they're going back to Chapman. Dan was just cool enough to let me try out some of their stuff and it gives me something to make videos on for you guys, which is super cool of him. Thank you dude, I'm massively grateful. He wants a full and honest take on these instruments, which is good because that's what he was going to get anyway. <laughs> The ML2 is a mahogany bodied single cut with a satin ash veneer connected to a 24 fret maple neck with a Makassar ebony board. At the headstock end we've got a 3x3 setup that's angled and has a volute, a graph tech nut and Chapman branded closed back tuners. Then for the rest of the hardware we've got Chapman Stentorian Zero humbuckers, we'll get onto them in a bit, two volumes and a tone with push pull and a Chapman hip shot style string through bridge. So yeah, you've probably realised that there's no bridge and tailpiece setup like a regular single cut and that's in part due to the the fact that this is a 25 and a half inch scale length which I think is sick. After playing my ML3 Pro Modern and it legitimately becoming one of my favourite guitars, it's my go to drop C machine now, I wasn't sure how well the standard series was going to hold up. It is the most affordable line that Chapman does so you don't get any of the luxuries like on the Pro Model like the roasted maple, the stainless steel frets, USA Seymour Duncans, locking tuners. This is made to be a more attainable strip back workhorse that doesn't compromise on quality but like I'd already been spoiled, and I? <laughs> also, this model is made in Indonesia, whereas the Pro models are made in Korea, so like, there is the instant suggestion that the quality might not be the same, if you're putting your stock into that sort of thing making a difference. Straight up, this thing is really good, dude. On a base level, this thing is a really well-constructed and dependable workhorse instrument. The fit and finish is excellent overall, bar a little bit of glue spill out when the nut's been fitted, which if we're completely honest, is a non-issue. However, there are some features on this guitar that I can't believe more people aren't talking about. One of the things that blew me away about the ML3 Pro was just how insanely good the neck and fretboard felt, and as it turns out, that's just Chapman's apparently. The attention to detail even the Indonesian builders are putting into making these necks feel super premium is unreal, dude. The satin on the back of the neck is absolutely gorgeous, the fretwork is killer, but by far the biggest thing that makes a difference to how comfortable this neck is is just how well rolled the fretboard edges are. Take a brand like Charvel for example, they're so well known for how nice their necks feel, partly due to the profile but mostly because of how well rolled the fretboard edges are. I've had like four of them and they were some of the best necks I've ever played and they're the closest brand that I can think of in terms of the care and attention put into these necks. Obviously the neck profiles are different but that's like a preference thing anyway. This and my ML3 Pro Modern are both better than any of the four Charvels that I owned previously, definitely in terms of fretwork and in terms of comfort, but I do need to address the elephant in the room. Wow, okay. You know what? You know what? Here's, first of all, wow. I know some of you aren't completely sold on the reworked shape of the ML2. I wasn't too sure either if I'm completely honest because I thought it looked a bit off. It has dawned on me though that the thing I didn't like about it in terms of appearance was the fact that it didn't have a bridge and tailpiece like a regular single cut. This fixed bridge leaves a little bit more junk in the trunk down here but honestly the more I see it in person the more I like it and when you realise it's down to the fact that they put a quality fixed bridge on this thing kind of makes sense. Seeing a bit more of this stained ash finish is far from a bad thing though and the back complements it really well with a satin black and loads of curves so I was skeptical before I tried the standard series but actually in terms of quality it's just as well made as the pro series is. Now let's talk about how this combination of parts and craftsmanship translate into playability. Probably my biggest concern about this thing was how well it was going to stay in tune. I mean I knew the bridge was good, in fact it's really good dude. That wasn't a concern but this is a single cut with own brand bog standard closed back tuners on it so like Chapman obviously knew this was going to be a concern for some players, so they've put a legit graph tech nut on there for prime lubrication. 
and then made adjustments to the headstock so the brake angle of the strings is completely straight. That all contributes to really good tuning stability even if the tuners are a little bit standard. They work fine and the guitar's tuning is super stable but like they could be better. There's a little bit of unresponsiveness, but nothing you wouldn't expect from a regular tuner. Once it's in tune though, dude, it stays there. And I have been bending and vibratoing huh? a lot. And once you're playing this thing, dude, all the choices that Chapman made for this guitar make total sense. It's like an S-Type and a single cut did the fusion dance and then came out better and stronger than ever. The contours and rounded back make this guitar super comfortable to sit with. The 25 and a half inch scale length makes the board feel more spacious. The hip shot style bridge allows for great setups and low action and the set neck makes for awesome tone and fantastic upper fret access. It's probably the most unique take on a single cut I think I've ever played and I'm a big fan. You've probably noticed something though, I'm not sitting classically with this guitar and that's because it just doesn't really work. I just can't find a comfortable way to get this guitar up at that 45 degree classical angle without it slipping a little bit and moving around. That's not a big concern for most of you admittedly and I haven't been having that big of an issue sitting with it in a relaxed position anyway but I did just want to mention it for the guys who like to sit with good posture like I do. The neck on this thing though dude. The C profile is very familiar feeling with a thickness that's like right in the sweet spot. It's got enough to really grab onto and keep your hands supported but it's not got too much that it gets in the way then there's a nice amount of shoulder leading into those absolutely pristine fretboard edges that i can't stop banging on about and when you combine that with the awesome fretwork this guitar is just effortless to play i'm having such a blast with it dude the upper fret access is really something that's worth a mention as well though too dude because it is great which isn't often the case on a lot of single cuts and it comes down to the design of this set neck you don't get quite the same level of upper fret access like on the ml3 pro with its set through neck but this is super close and it does feel really natural in the end when you are playing further up the board. The rounding off of the heel itself makes this just a top tier way to make this kind of joint and some other brands probably could take notes. The sounds you just heard from this guitar were all provided courtesy of the Chapman Stentorian Zero Unbuckers. According to the Oxford Dictionary, because I sure as shit didn't know what Stentorian meant, I don't play enough countdown for that. Stentorian simply means loud and powerful when you're talking about someone's voice the more you know. Now I think that's fairly accurate. In terms of output, the Alnico magnets in these produce a resistance of 14.5k and 9.5k in the bridge and neck respectively. So we're talking pretty mid-range outputs which gives them a little bit more flexibility and expands their use case to loads of different styles of music. Whatever you play, you can have a great time with this guitar and get really solid results. Personally, I am a big fan of the way this guitar sounds overall, but for the styles of music that I play most often, I don't quite think they're hot enough. You can compensate for that with your amp, obviously, but I just prefer a little bit more bite. As a side note, the interesting thing is that these are the lower output pickups out of the two guitars that I've got to try. The ML1's got ceramic Chapman pickups, which I like the idea of, but that's something for the other review. And aside from the pickups, the longer scale length of this guitar with the set neck and the fixed bridge give this guitar quite a unique sound. If I could describe it, it's got a bit more of the snap of a modern instrument, but then some of the throatiness that you get with a single cut, and I I think that's super interesting. So how can I sum this guitar up? It's a really fresh and unusual take on the formula, combining the classic stylings of a single cut with the DNA of an S-Type to create a playing experience that's really unique and something I think you should check out. And on top of that, the level of polish and attention to the details that make a guitar hyper playable, like elevate this guitar above most of its competition. I've played guitars over twice the price of this one with necks that felt nowhere near as good. And that's a testament to the fact that Chapman are putting some real effort into the way that their guitars feel 
and I respect it. The only tiny things that don't align with my personal preference are the pickups and probably the shape to a certain extent. For me, the pickups aren't quite hot enough, but it's not reasonable to expect brands to be just banging metal ass metal pickups in every single guitar. What about the dudes who like boring music? I'm joking, I am joking, don't come for me. <laughs> and then I think the shape could be a bit of an acquired taste for some. Now, I've grown to really like it a lot, but I'm not gonna lie to you and say that I was like properly stoked on it from the beginning. You might be stoked on it right away though, which is totally cool, but on the other side of the coin, you might really not like it, and that's equally cool. All I can say is that the redesign of this guitar makes total sense when you sit down to give it a good rip. To be honest, I'm actually blown away by how close the standard series gets to the Pro series in terms of quality and feel. And if you wanna know a bit more about what makes the Pro series so good in my opinion, you can check out my review right here. In the meantime, thanks for being here dudes. I appreciate Appreciate you. Take care, mate. Stay safe. I'll see you later. <laughs> Popped up in my day. Because the concept of that last video, it was from Chapman Guitars. A little bit spicy. What's wrong with my face? Try out and get my thoughts on. I had absolute <laughs> couple of guitars to try out. My mouth is so dry, bar a slight bit of glue spill out when the think of that puts as much care and attention to me not being able to speak. You don't get quite the same level, the same level of upper fret access as the same level of up, quite the same level of quite the same upper fret access. Combining the classic stylings of a single cut. What am I trying to fuck say?